Hi, this week we're going to be discussing applications of mixture of models. So far we have discussed how to fit models to data, but now we want to uh, elaborate a little bit on what you can do with those models once you have fitted it to data. And the first application that I want to discuss is density estimation. The problem of density estimation has to do with recovering what is the density of the probability distribution function that generated the data uh, that you are working with. This is a problem that is fairly common, and it's actually the, the problem that we used to motivate mixture models in the first place when we talked about all the flexibility that mixture models have uh, to capture different shapes of distributions. So uh, before we actually get into the details of how you use mixture models for density estimation, let's discuss a little bit uh, the traditional way in which uh, density estimation is performed, that is using uh, kernel density estimators. This is a technique that you may be already familiar with. Uh, like in the case of the mixture models that we have been discussing so far, you start with an IID sample of size n from some density f. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to construct an estimator, call it f tilde, of that density. And that estimator has a very particular form. Uh, it takes the form 1 over n sum from i equals 1 to n of uh, 1 over h g of x minus xi distance divided by h, where g is a density of your choice, and uh, h is called the bandwidth. As I said, you may be already familiar with this type of approach uh, for density estimation. So uh, you have uh, an average of these kernels, and that's uh, how you typically refer to this guy as the kernel. Uh, so G is typically called the kernel of the density estimator. Uh, so you do a linear combination or, or a weighted average of these kernels, and each one of the kernels is essentially evaluated in each one of the observations that you uh, have in your sample. Uh, the choice of G is free. You can basically choose whatever you want, but a very common choice is uh, Gaussian distributions, in which case you get the Gaussian kernel density estimator, which takes the form um, so this would be an example. We should take the form of 1 over n sum from 1 to n of 1 over h, 1 over square root 2 pi, exp of minus 1 half, uh, x minus xi divided by h squared. So you can see that essentially what you're doing is taking these Gaussian distributions, centering them at each one of the xi's. So if you think about your observations being here, 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 and here, and here, what you're doing is grabbing these little normals So you can, this is x1, this could be x4, x3, x2, and x5. What you're doing is putting each one of these little Gaussian kernels that have a standard deviation h, so you can interpret the bandwidth in this case as a standard deviation of the kernel, and uh, putting them in each one of the observations and then averaging all of them to get a bigger uh, distribution that is your kernel density estimator. So this would be your F tilde, uh, and this would be uh, each one of the components that are involved in the sum. Now what I want to do is I want to contrast this approach uh, that is fairly common in the literature with what you would do if you were working with uh, a mixture model. 
So let's think about a mixture of k components. We have already seen the definition. Again, we have this x1 up to xn. And we can create an estimator. Let me call this one f hat of x by feeding the mixture model and uh, taking, for example, the maximum likelihood estimators that you obtain from uh, using your EM algorithm into the formula for uh, the mixture model. And you will get something that looks like the sum uh, from k equals 1 to capital K of omega k g sub k of x uh, given theta. So you can already start to see that there are some similarities between the two sides. We'll, we'll discuss them in a little bit more detail in a second. But first, let's, uh, again, to keep the parallel with the previous example, let's write uh, this for the particular case of a location mixture of normals. In that case, um, your f uh, hat of x would take the form of the sum from k equals 1 to capital K of my omega K hat uh, multiplied by 1 over the square root 2 pi sigma hat x minus 1 over 2 sigma square hat xi minus mu hat K uh, squared. Sorry, there is no i in here because this is the argument of the function that we're working with. OK, so now that we have uh, these two things side by side, it's a little bit easier to compare, in particularly using the case of the mixture of Gaussian distributions. So, so you can see that uh, the Gaussian kernel density estimate that we have on this side actually has exactly the same form of a mixture, but with some very particular features. So one of the features is, first of all, uh, we have n components, so we have as many components as observations in the in this uh, quote unquote mixture that we have on this side. Whereas here we are going to have capital K components that are typically uh, smaller than uh, the number of observations that we're working with. So 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 this looks like a mixture the, with just a larger number of components in the case of the kernel density estimator. Uh, the other thing that is similar is you can see that 1 over n on this side essentially plays the same role as the weights play here. Uh, and that makes sense. Uh, what we're saying is that each observation or each component of the mixture, because it's associated with a single observation, it's going to have uh, a weight that is equal to 1 divided by the total number of observations. So it's just proportional to the number of observations that we have uh, in, the, in the kernel, if you will. Which is exactly, if you remember the formulas that you had for the EM algorithm, that is exactly what was happening. So, so your maximum likelihood estimator for this uh, omega hat was essentially very close to just being the proportion of observations that are assigned to this particular uh, kernel K. So, um, so, so there is a very clear parallel Then, when you start stretching uh, capital K, when you uh, start to increase the number of components in the mixture, what you're doing is basically making the weights more uniform because you tend to put one observation in each component of the mixture. Um, the other thing that uh, to highlight here is that uh, sigma essentially plays the same role as h. So uh, the bandwidth in the kernel density estimator is essentially the same thing as the uh, standard deviation in uh, my uh, location mixture of Gaussians. And the other thing to highlight is, uh, so the kernels here are centered at x sub i at each one of the observations. Uh, the kernels are centered here at this mu hat sub k. So there is kind of a parallel between these two quantities. Now, again, think about what happens when capital K grows and is very large. If you make capital uh, K being close to n, then this mu hat that uh, in practice is something like the average of the observations that have been assigned to the kernel essentially become the average of a single observation that has been assigned to that cluster, which becomes something very close to x sub i. So you can see that there is a very strong relationship between these two approaches, and in particular that we can think about um, 
doing Gaussian location mixtures of Gaussian distributions where all the components have the same sigma as being in some sense uh, a model-based uh, counterpart to this uh, kernel density estimator that is very widely used. Why is this important? Well, uh, by putting it in the context, by putting this estimator in the context of mixtures and, and basically drawing this parallel, we uh, open the door for a number of extensions and improvements on the methods. For example, uh, here we are working with a common variance for all the components, which means that we have a common bandwidth. It doesn't matter where you are in the space, uh, you have the same bandwidth. That's not always a good idea. So you can have situations, for example, where you have a density that is very highly multimodal here and then becomes much smoother in another region. So in, a, in this area, you would want a smaller edge. You want a smaller bandwidth so that you can capture this many peaks. And in this area where things are very smooth and not changing very often, you would want a larger H. That is not something that you can easily do uh, with kernel density estimators, but it's something that you can very easily do using mixture uh, of normals simply by allowing the variance of each one of the components to change, to be different. And that basically allows uh, the components that are located down here to have a, a smaller variance and therefore a smaller bandwidth, and the ones that are located up here to have a bigger variance and therefore a bigger bandwidth. Uh, another uh, way in which this is useful is it allows us to think about uh, how Bayesians uh, do kernel density estimation. And the way in which Bayesians do it is by essentially feeding these uh, mixture models using uh, MCMC algorithms or some other technique that allows for the computation of the posterior distribution. 